This is Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ. I'd like to welcome all of you to the evening services of our church for Sunday, September the 5th. Uh, it will be a little different uh, this evening. My singing accompaniment is under the weather, unable to sing. I would not like to either bore you or scare you by singing a solo. And so we will dispense with the song service. And uh, this evening, <clears throat> the uh, evening service will consist uh, simply of a lesson that I hope will be uh, both enlightening and beneficial to all of us. If you were there this morning, uh, you heard that uh, the title of the lesson will be Identification. And so, with that in mind, if we would turn to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 to 16, we have these words written for us. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. <clears throat> Life can be a bummer sometime, can it? We've lived through some uh, year and a half or more of uh, times of tribulation that uh, we have never lived through before. Now, notwithstanding, all of us have had things happen in our lives that have uh, caused us sorrow, that have caused us grief, that have caused us consternation, along with those times in life that have allowed us to have joy and, and pleasure and happiness. Uh, with that in mind, um, let's talk about the negative for just a moment so that... Uh, Maybe we can get a better handle on this. We've never had such a prolonged period of time <coughs> in which our lives were so drastically changed. Uh, life sometimes hits us very, very hard. Sometimes there are sudden illnesses. Uh, sometimes there are family problems. Sometimes there are tragedies. Sometimes there are uh, the death of loved ones. And with that in mind, um, uh, there, you know, I, I've just kind of scratched the surface. Sometimes we suffer from dwindling resources. Sometimes there are the rising cost of things. There is the worry that we have about our children or about our parents, even the betrayal of a trusted friend. Life can really get overwhelming at times. And the measure, the measure of how our lives are going to function and how we are to generate ourselves from day to day um, is what I'd like to talk about for just a, a few moments. Have you ever wished that sometimes life wouldn't hurt so much? And by the way, not just for you, but uh, for some of those who you care for very, very deeply. Uh, we are saddened when uh, people that we are very close to uh, suffer maladies of some sort. And the Bible clearly teaches us that suffering is not out of the ordinary. Job chapter five, verse seven, uh, in it Job says, man is born to trouble as surely as sparks fly upward. And this ancient axiom uh, that was uh, told to us by Job, uh, is 
even transcends into Jesus as God in the flesh. Isaiah, in Isaiah 53, verse 3, described Jesus as a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Now, we tend to look at Jesus as that wonderful man who went about for three plus years uh, teaching, and uh, his teachings are just magnificent. The parables are uh, just uh, outstanding. The Sermon on the Mount is uh, perhaps uh, the best compilation of advice that uh, the human race has ever been given. However, but we must keep within our mind that Jesus was not exempt to pain and suffering. And any of us who think that we are exempt from all of that are sadly mistaken. We can turn to John chapter 15, verse 18, Acts chapter 14, verses 21 to 22, and even Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. I've said those slowly enough so that if you do have your Bibles and you want to reference those, they are John 15, 18, Acts 14, 21 to 22, and Philippians 1, verse 29. You know, no matter what our station in life no one is immune to tribulations. Job, I guess maybe sometimes, is the shining example of that. Um, you know, Job had it all. He had a wonderful family. He had riches. And then all of that came crashing down around him. And more, I guess, better than a good attitude or even positive thinking in times of trial. And, and here maybe is the key and the crux to the lesson this evening, is to have faith and hope in the true living God. To have faith and hope in that true living God. That's what 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9 explains to us that God loves us immeasurably according to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 19 and has given us this powerful demonstration of his great love in the person of Jesus Christ, his son. John 3.16 explains that uh, very, very, very well, as does Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 to 29. And so with all of this and with all of the, uh, I guess, the idea surrounding uh, the understanding that suffering does exist in the world and that persecution does exist in the world, we we just need to look this right in the face and look at the words of James that tells us that when we do suffer persecution, that we become stronger. It is indeed how we deal with the storms of life that determines how uh, I'm, I'm searching for words here, how, how, um, wonderful our lives can actually be. The culmination of Jesus' awful suffering took place at Calvary when he suffered unjustly at the hands of sinful men. What Jesus suffered, he did not deserve to suffer just from a primal standpoint. You know, he was innocent of all the charges that were brought against him. The reason that Jesus suffered, the reason that Jesus died, is that this was part of God's plan. In his suffering, 
what Jesus did was he took on the penalty of sin on our behalf in order to bring us back to God the Father. Now, Jesus told his disciples many times, if you want to see the Father, look to me. Jesus told the disciples, you're not hearing my words. You're hearing the words of the Father that come through me. And so 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18 and John chapter 14 verse 6 lets us know that Jesus wants to bring us back to God the Father. But not only is Jesus' suffering linked with sin and linked with redemption in the scriptures, but it also has to do with my title this evening. It has to do with identification. Because he himself suffered, he is able to relate to us in our times of trial and temptation. When we think of the myriad of things from time to time that uh, are negative things in our life that we would rather not happen, we, we have but to hearken back to what Jesus suffered at the hands of sinful men. This being so, Hebrews 4.16 uh, tells us that we can come boldly, okay? We can come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and that we may find grace to help in time of need. You see, Jesus is there in time of need. He's telling us, I've gone through all of this stuff. I've been there. And I came through it for your redemption, for your reconciliation back to the Father. So that when you suffer so that when you have things that happen to you that you would rather not happen know that i as your savior can identify and what a wonderful thought and what a wonderful promise that is one that all christians need to just i think grab hold of and never let go no matter how dire the circumstances might be. You know, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, explains us that to us that we are to, to look at the wonderful things in life. You know, keep our mind on those great things. And if we fill our minds and our hearts with those great things, then the, the sufferings, uh, and whatever we are going through lets us know that regardless, regardless, God is with us through Jesus Christ. And so whatever it is, Jeremiah lets us know in Jeremiah 31 verse 3 that no matter what happens, God loves us dearly. He's with us every step of the way. It, it isn't that Jesus will prevent the storm, but rather that Jesus will help us to see our way through the storm and not just function, but be able to come out better as a result of it. You know, when, when we do suffer, uh, when we do have hardships, it is much easier for us to relate to people that are having problems. Oh, you know, it, 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 it's not for us to go to a person that's suffering and then say, oh, I've been through all of that before. Nobody wants to hear that. But what they do want to know is that there is a source of help in the time of that storm. 
we can explain that that we suffered and then we look to the Lord and we realize that even through that storm, God calmed the waters and he enabled us to ride our way through this. That Jesus is with us, according to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, Psalm chapter 23, verse 4, and that all of his promises to us are true. Someone has rightly said, Jesus is no security against storms, but he is the perfect security in storms. He's He's never promised us an easy passage, but I believe what he has promised us is a safe landing. God tells us that through Jesus Christ, we are supposed to live as godly a lives as we possibly can, using Jesus as our brother in his teachings, in the way he lived his life as our perfect example. And what we're supposed to do in, in those particular times is turn to our Lord and say, you know, I'm having a problem right now. Help me to see my way through this problem. We are to literally take heart in all of this. You know, the, the wonderful thing and the, the shining thing in all of this are the many precious promises that are ours in Jesus Christ. Now, how do those promises take root? How do those promises come to fruition? It is only by our faithfulness to him and to his cause that is required. But the requirement is a lasting one. From the time we step from the watery grave of baptism to the time that we take our last breath, it is up to us to be faithful to our Lord. It is up to us to maintain that relationship, to say, God, you are my only God, and your son is my only savior. He is my only Messiah. He is my only example by which I can live my life the way I'm supposed to live my life. We can live through the onslaught of life of, of the negative things that happen to us only because of our identification. <laughs> only that we identify with Jesus. You know, as we look around us, we see people cruising through life and seemingly um, everything is, is, is as great as can be. But it never is, is it? It's kind of like, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, someone said to me sometime about your blood pressure. You know, on the outside, uh, you can be like a, a duck swimming in the water. We look at the duck and he's just moving nice and easily and gracious, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, just, just as smooth as can be. But what we don't see are those little feet underneath the water paddling like crazy. And that's the way life often is for many of us. Sometimes it's calm and serene, but inside our feet are paddling feverishly. It doesn't have to be that way. Jesus is our security. He is, he is not our security against the storms, but he is our perfect security in and within the storms 
of life. And so uh, our lesson this evening is such that uh, what we need to do is understand what our identification really is. It's Jesus. We are to identify with him. We are to identify him in times of plenty. We are to identify him in times of tribulation. Because Jesus went through all of it. Jesus had some wonderful high moments. When Jesus uh, came through the temptation of the devil, when the devil made him these offers, Jesus came through shining like a beacon in the night. Now these temptations were real temptations. And he, he had these temptations all of his life, but Jesus always made his way through because he kept his eyes on God. And we, through Jesus, are to keep our eyes on God because God is our hope. And that, that shining, that shining thing that we are moving toward is our relationship with God here on earth. And if we do it right, if we obey God and we obey the words of Jesus into salvation, we have the opportunity to live forever and ever, eternally with our Lord. Isn't that a wonderful thought? That wonderful thought stands there and says to us, you have God, you have eternity. You have what Jesus offered to his disciples when he said, in my house, there are many mansions. In my mansion, there are many rooms. And there's a room just for you. Isn't it wonderful to understand that there is a room for me in the Lord's kingdom. And even though life may throw us a curveball from time to time, even though we may suffer persecution from time to time, even though we may have hardships from time to time, we know that Jesus is our security. He is our security not against the storm. He is our security in the storm. He doesn't promise us a safe passage. Life is life, and that is what we deal with each day. But what Jesus promises us, if we live a godly life, if we obey him into salvation, he promises us a safe landing. And that's what we are all looking for in our lives. I hope that this message has been uplifting to you and we understand the precious promises that God makes to us in his son, Jesus Christ, that we can endure everything that life can throw at us and still come out shining, still come out uh, uh, when life ends living with our Lord eternally. This only happens when we obey uh, God into salvation. Jesus set the tone for us. And on that day of Pentecost in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter told those people, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we start that walk, then we are making our way through the trials and the tribulations of life. And, and hoping with all of our might that as we do this right, that we will have that safe landing. And so if you are subject to the invitation of Jesus Christ, we make that offer to you this evening. Uh, just to contact one of us. We'll, we'll be at your side on the phone, uh, however uh, it, 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 it uh, shakes down, to help you to start your walk. Let's pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, you know, we realize that uh, 
we have a wonderful life and that Jesus promised us an abundant life. If we look at our lives from day to day, we can see all the wonderful things that happen to us. The love of family, the love of friends, the love of our brothers and sisters in the Lord. But most of all, the hope of salvation. With that, we know that uh, into every life, rain is going to fall. We're so grateful that in Jesus Christ, uh, we have the security to meet the storms of life. And that through Jesus, uh, we are promised that safe landing. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to appreciate this so much in our lives. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, uh, to be your humble servants in whatever we do. Help us that uh, the lives that we live may lead us to that safe landing, that we would live eternally with you. Bless us, continue to be with us, comfort us and help us uh, because you comfort us to learn how to comfort others around us. We pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Be very, very safe, and may God bless you all. When peace like a river